had David Dundas, which which came first? Was it the advert? Because there was an advert for Brutus Jeans, which went, I pull Brutus Jeans on. And then there was this song, but I don't know which came first, whether it was the song or the advert. Whether the advert is a version of the song or the song is a version of the advert. Anyway, someone will know. And we're still getting in undated with obscure genes that we have lost. And it's probably because the bloke sitting opposite me has got them. <laughs> because he uses them and he works with genes. And the work is quite extraordinary. Because these are large, very detailed, very kind of lifelike and realistic pictures. I was going to say paintings, but clearly they're not paintings. Because they're all made out of denim. Um, and the man who made them, Ian Berry, also known as Denimu, is here with us now. Ian, welcome to BBC London. Thank you. Thanks first of all, me. where did the idea first come from? Would you, what, what was the first thing you ever did with a pair of jeans? Um, the, well, the idea came from, uh, I was, it was at near the end of uh, university, and um, my mum realised I wasn't coming back up to the north. I was going to uh, head into London, so she uh, <laughs> decided to like, look in my bedroom and think, yeah, I'd make a nice uh, guest room. So uh, she emptied all the cupboards one Easter, and um, I was looking at what she'd emptied for DVDs, all kinds of things I didn't want her to see, and made a big pile <laughs> of jeans. Right, and, yeah. um, so I was like, where do I start? And I just looked at these jeans, and I'd already done like this kind of collage about newspapers at university. And um, Were you studying art? Um, I actually wasn't. It was graphic design, right. like advertising. And... Um, so I looked at these jeans and I kind of thought, well, there's a big um, like range of uh, spectrum of colours here. And yeah. um, rather than take them to a charity shop, I decided to cut them up and uh, make a mess of the place. And it, literally, at the beginning, it, it was simply just to get some creative energy out and a little bit of fun. Because I can see that because of all the different textures of jeans and the way that they do go to a whole array, array of colours and stuff, I can see that you might use them in a sort of an abstract Sense, but the idea that you would make really rather detailed figurative works out of them, which is what you do, that, I don't know where that would come from. Well, originally I, I really did think I would go more abstract, like really ripping the jeans, doing large pieces, but yeah. somehow I've been brought into doing almost photorealistic pieces. Yeah. And um, when I started, I was like really exaggerating that I was using jeans, like using the seams, um, like different areas, and like almost saying, look, it's jeans, really wanting people to see it's jeans. Now I'm actually using the jeans to hide the fact that it's jeans, like finding new techniques. I mean, that's what makes it so exciting for me still because every day I'm finding new ways to, like, use material. And people are actually from a distance not realising the that jeans. That it's denim? Yeah. And is it... Do you still actively go and seek out denim? Do you think, well, I need a really pale bit with a fine sheen? Or do you, do you know what I mean? How do you kind of work? Uh, I do, like, a uh, scour vintage stores. I mean, I was in Camden yesterday and, like, charity shops. But I do get an awful lot of donations. <laughs> so if anybody does want to send some in, uh, I'll send something back. Um, it's... I have about a thousand, one and a half thousand pairs, which wow. actually... It helps. Are they all cut up? Have they all got holes in them? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm actually trying to put, actually my old wardrobe's got about one or two pairs of jeans in. <laughs> and do you use jeans of different colours? Do you use like black jeans, white jeans? I, I've, I've just done one and it's actually an exhibition of like, um, I, I, I get a lot of donations, so people bring grey and yep. black jeans in and I, I just put those into a storeroom. And one day I went in and saw the whole range of um, different grey jeans, so I decided to, um, to do those and it worked really nicely. However, um, you think of jeans and you think of blue, yeah. and that is my strong point. I and have. that is the dominant colour, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, certainly, and um, in indigo, it's just so, you know, they go together. Yeah. Whereas coloured jeans I've done, and uh, I really like it, and often it's nice to mix it up a little bit, but blue jeans is, yeah, it's blue jeans. Now, I still don't know if people will have a sense of what we're talking about, because, for example, on the front of the, the, the brochure of the exhibition, which is up at the Cato Gallery in Hampstead, and we'll remind people of that again, there's a large panorama of a group of people sitting on Primrose Hill, it's a view that many Londoners will know if you've ever been up there um, and looked out. And it's got all of those iconic London buildings. It's got the zoo and it's also got all the people sitting in it. And it's also, it's almost, as you say, kind of photorealist. So this is not, I mean, how do you get that, that, that degree of finesse? Is it fine little bits of jeans? Or? I mean, that, that piece, I mean, that took months to make and there's, I mean, there's hundreds of different pairs of jeans gone into it and like different shades. But the thing what you won't, 
I mean, obviously, on the radio, <laughs> no one probably have a sense of sure. this, but when you're looking at the image there, it becomes very flat. These pieces are very heavy and very layered and, like, very textured in 3D. Right. And almost like when you get very thick layers of paint and all of that yeah, sort of stuff. I mean, it I guess, is. Yeah. Um, I often say it's like almost like when artists use oil paint, it yeah. gets very, very thick, and a lot of people come to the opening last night, and they'd seen, like, the brochure, they'd seen it on the internet, in magazines. They didn't quite realise what it was like and they're big life. as well the yeah, scale of them yeah, is large yeah, isn't really it? big and that brings new problems to me but it's, <laughs> it's not a challenge I mean you also do lots of portraits for example yeah. and, and you know paint pictures of people funnily enough is one of Elvis who we're doing a fourth of from late and there's a kind of a there's almost a night hawks at the diner kind of picture there yeah, isn't it yeah I, um, yeah I've got a strong soft spot for a hopper <laughs> me too yeah. yeah and then there's all the record sleeves how did that come about well there's two different points of going into this like I've created this um, r vintage record store which I'm sure like you would look at that and you'd be very nostalgic to us. I've got all them albums yeah, yeah. I've heard that a lot last night and um, it was everyone was saying I've got really good music takes and yes I really love all these bands or like, acts but the reason I chose those each one was very specific to uh, a link to the gene and denim history really I mean either the obvious ones like um, you know Bruce Springsteen uh, with a denim clad car yeah. I mean that's like a really obvious link and for me I can't you know, I'm t nearly turning 30 so I didn't see a lot of this so I can't imagine a time when people are not turning to the jeans as a go-to item of clothes in the wardrobe yeah but the strongest element what came out for me is I've really fallen in love with the kind of CBGB scene and yeah. I just wish I was alive well you got a television <laughs> well I was just about and so well, I saw I all of these bands may, first time uh, I believe you may have met some of these I've met people. lots of these yeah, people yeah. Think, yeah. <laughs> yeah no no I've interviewed Patty Smith I've interviewed Debbie Harry I've done all yeah. of these people I mean Patty Smith to be honest was one which actually stood out as probably the only one that I was the least familiar with and it's someone who I've really grown to love over oh, the last I mean I've listened to her in the studio but when like, you're in a gym shop do you think oh I must get hold of a pair of Lees because they have a particular texture or, well, or those Levi's from the 1950s are really great or the I don't know Gloria Vanderbilt, which is yeah. the one we've just been naming. Yeah, I mean, have, you ever, you, have you ever worked with a pair of Glorias? No, I haven't actually. <laughs> and I think if I actually found one, I'd say it's, it's almost like a lot of vintage jeans. I almost feel really, really terrible cutting up because you know, <laughs> you know, they're quite worth a bit on their own. And uh, you know, it's going to go down as part of history. And um, you know, somebody offered me quite a well famous person's pair of jeans, and it was just like, well. You can't rip them up, you can't tear them, because on their own, I could actually devalue them if I actually Absolutely. do. Um, what like about to... other fabrics? Have you worked with corduroy, or have you tried... No, no, I mean, it's interesting that when I was younger, my mum would dress me in corduroy, and I'd just hate it. I love corduroy. So, um, now I'm growing more into it, but as a kid, like, when everyone else has got the jeans on, I think, you know, now, as I mentioned at the beginning, but I would see... This pile of jeans, so it was a pure aesthetic value, but later on I realised that I was really connected well, with it's, denim. I mean, I'm so sure I've like got comfortable a, with it. I mean, I'm sure I've got a story that's repeated for many people of my generation. I remember when I was about 12, I desperately wanted a pair, or 11 or 12, I wanted a pair of Levi's really badly. And, um, and my mum, you know, my mum was quite poor, we lived in a Kansas state, my dad was gone and all this sort of stuff. And she saved up to get me some, she bought me home these jeans and we were going on holiday, we were going to a holiday camp. Yeah. And uh, it was the first holiday we'd had in years and she gave me these jeans and they were from Woolworths. Uh -oh. And I just <laughs> threw them in the bin. And in the end, she had to go and get a provident check to buy me a proper pair of Levi's because I could not wear those jeans. Yeah, well, it's they're just the really important. Today, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is. Because they, 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 particularly, I think, when you're growing up, they have that very totemic kind yeah. of role, don't they? I mean, even now, I think it's the same. But now there's like hundreds of, you know, probably thousands of different like, <laughs> denim brands and like, I mean, one, one thing which is always a misconception about me is people think I'm a denim expert. You're not. And I am, you know. You are as a material. Probably, yeah, the material and my history and things, but, and I am probably more so than the average person, but, you know, I go on these denim blogs and they <laughs> talk about all these things, different brands. You know, there's so many, but I don't think anyone can really know what's going on. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm based in Sweden now, and they're absolutely obsessed with denim. And oh, really? They've got probably 11 to 15 really strong brands going on. Wow. There's a really good denim scene going on there. Well, there's some amazing denim art here. Do you think you'll all... I mean, do you work with any other materials, or is no, it exclusively... I, mean, I, think, I think if it starts becoming more collage or mixed media, then I have thought about using like brown leather to kind of like you know because obviously well, you can always use the brown leather bit the patch on the jeep yeah well that's the thing I was like thinking that introducing that as a section but I mean as I said earlier it's, every day I'm surprising myself like how 
like the new ways of using denim. So I keep developing that. There's so many ideas still that I want to complete because I mean the work takes so so long. Does it? Yeah. I mean. <laughs> Well, it's painstaking. I don't know how many years of painstaking work there is on display here, but they're, they're quite extraordinary. They're up at the Cato Gallery, C-A-T-T-O, which is in Heath Street in Hampstead. Um, can people see them on the internet? Uh, they are on the internet, yeah, but um, it's, they are viewed best in person. I'm uh, sure they You are. don't get it, but yeah, I mean, the photographs are very nice, but to, to get the texture, the depth, it does kind of get lost. Well, I would so. get up there to go and get the texture and the depth and just an extent of the extraordinary work of Ian Berry, also known as Denimu. Ian, thank you very, very much. Thank you. See that?